Welcome to part four. The first thing I'd like to do is just review where we are with the script and the history of the development of the script. So in part one, we produced a script which creates a graph. And under the graph, it has a button that allows you to view histograms. Now, this graph, we have hard coded the X variable, which is the runtime. So in lesson two, we provided the ability to have a user specified X variable. And notice if I click the button for histograms, it correctly plots the distributions for the two variables associated with the graph. In lesson three, we extended the functionality further so that if I select a predictor variable, not only do I have a button that allows me to view the histograms, but I also have a button that allows me to fit a regression line. And then we did something else. We said, well, hold on, we can't fit a regression line if we choose a categorical X variable. So let's just run that script again and choose a categorical variable. And what we did is we said, okay, well, if it's categorical, we'll provide the option to perform a one-way analysis of variance. And that's pretty much where we finished. But there's one problem now. If we use the button to view histograms, we get an error. And this error is because we are trying to create a distribution of continuous variables, but we now have a discrete variable. So I want to fix this problem that's arisen within the code. It's maybe worth just looking at the code that we need to uh, look at the distributions for these. So if I went to the distribution and say that we have oxy and the sex column and I'll do histograms only. And let's just minimize the home window. We don't need to see that now. But I want to add summary statistics to Oxy, but we don't have the option of this, of course, for the sex. What we can do is add frequencies. So that's the appropriate output in this instance. So let me just save this script to a script window. And that's our reference code. Let me close this. Now let's look at the code that we actually have. So let me just open up lesson three. Now, as this script gets longer, it's perhaps useful. We're going to start scrolling up and down to see the top of the script and the bottom of the script. So it's convenient to split this. I can right click and I can split this horizontally. So now on the left hand side, I can scroll um, independently of the right hand side. So on the right hand side, I can look at the bottom of my code and at the left hand side, I can look at the top. And notice here, my histograms, we have maybe you need to just widen this a little bit, but uh, you can see my histograms. We're trying to create a distribution of continuous variables. Compare that code to this code here, whereas what I have is one continuous and one nominal. So we need different types of code in here, depending on whether the X variable is continuous or nominal. So to fix this, I'm going to add an additional parameter uh, that will be input into this function. And this is going to be the type of the X variable. And now what I can do is say something like this. I can say if X type is equal to continuous, then we're going to do this distribution. Else, we're going to do something else, and the something else is this code here. So I'm going to paste this in after the comma, which is acting as an else. Like so. If you like, I can just put a comment on there that that comma is the else. And let's indent that properly. Don't need that semicolon. Okay, so let's just take a look at this code now. 
Now, I'm actually on low resolution screen. So because I'm on a low resolution screen, this idea of splitting doesn't work quite so well because you can't see the full width of the code. But this is where I now have my histograms. So if X is continuous, and this is a new parameter, that new argument that's being passed to the function. So we're going to have to um, pass that at some point. But if it's continuous, we do the standard output that we've been doing up till now. But if it's discrete, then we've got a, a separate piece of code. Now, let's just remember we have to, we don't want the hard coded oxy. We want to do this, evaluate the Y column in here. And for the evaluate X column, that replaces this here. Okay, so that should be good. Now, at the bottom of our code, we have the case that we have set up histograms, but we want to put into here the third argument, which is going to be the type. Now, it turns out we've already calculated the type. We've done it here. So maybe I just want to bring that up. I want to uh, do that determination, move that and do it before I set up the histograms. So I'll just pop it in there. So I've got the X type and that can now come into here like so. And you notice it's also being used to decide what type of button, whether we do a regression line or a one way. So this should fix the problem. Let's see if it does. So I'm going to select, let's just select runtime first of all, a continuous variable. So view histograms is still working correctly. Now let's see if we've fixed the problem. And now this is working correctly. So problem fixed, that's a good job done. The only thing left for us now is just to think about, are there any other error conditions that could arise with this? So let's run the script again and think about what's happening. But when I run it, the first thing it does is give me a list of all the columns in my data table. The only thing that can really go wrong is that we don't have a data table in the first instance. So let's look at the code. At the very beginning, we just define our functions and then we have our main code that starts here. And the first thing we do is we define the Y variable and we get a reference to the current data table. What happens if we don't have a data table open? Well, let's see. Let me just show DT. And in fact, I can just run these two pieces of code. Let me do a right click and show the embedded log. And if I show this at the moment, then you'll see that DT is a reference to the data table fitness. Let me take that data table and close it. So now I have no data tables open and let's do this again. And you can see it has the value empty. Empty is a special condition in jump that we can detect. So I can do the following if is empty dt i'm going to do something i'm just going to display an error message in a new window uh, missing data And I want this to be a modal window. And once the user dismisses this window, I just want to throw an error, which effectively is just going to abort execution. So now let's just run that piece of code again. Missing data, no data tables are open. You click OK and execution aborts. So that's fine. Now let's just run the entire script just to make sure this does abort execution correctly. I run the script, no data tables are open, click OK, nothing else happens. That's good. And if I come back now to my home window and just open that data table and run the script, it all works as usual. So that's good. Um, anything else? 
Well, we're looking for a Y column called Oxy, and it's possible that we have a data table that's open, but it doesn't contain Y column. Well, we define Y column to be Oxy, and then we do this uh, uh, piece of code to get the X column. Now, as part of that, we provided a list to the user. So let's just remind ourselves how that works. We've got this list. Now, one of the things I did with this list was to remove Oxy from the list because we don't want Oxy on the X axis. So this is where we did it. We did a remove from. We basically asked the question. Well, first of all, we got the list of column names. We then asked, where does the Y column appear in that list? And then we removed it from the list. Well, let's put Oxy to be Oxy2. So there's no Oxy2 in this data table. Now let's look at what happens here. Let's just show pause. And I'm just going to put a throw after that because I don't want to run any further than this. I just want to see what happens. And you'll see that pause is zero. So if pause is zero, whereas if we have Oxy, then pause I think is five. So if it's zero, it means it's not found oxy in the data table. And then our assumption, because when we look at the definitions of our functions here, we always put in this Y column to be oxy. So I'm going to actually just borrow this piece of logic there and I'm going to put it in here. So this time I'm going to say if pause equals zero, then missing Y column. And I can say oxy column not found. So let's see how that works. So first of all, we'll try it with oxy2. So this is the error condition. And if I run, it says oxy column not found. If we have oxy, then everything works as usual. Okay, that's good. So I think we've captured the, the error conditions that can occur with this data. Let me turn off the log and let me remove the split. So this is our final code. Let's call this uh, lesson four. And just to summarize again, so we can run the script, we can choose a categorical variable and we can perform one way analysis of variance. And we can also correctly view the histograms for these data. This pretty much finishes what I set out to do with this script. But one of the things you'll find is as you develop scripts, you start using them and you start realizing that there's better ways of maybe designing them. So in part five, we're going to redesign this script. And let me show you the motivation for it. I can run the script and I can maybe look at run pulse or run pulse. And I can run the script again and look at something else. But it's pretty tedious to have to keep running the script each time I want to look at a different variable. It would be much nicer if I could actually just put in here a column switcher and switch the X variable for a whole list. So instead of asking me for the X variable, maybe I want to ask the question, provide a list of variables, and this is the list that's going to go in the column switcher. And then I can just dynamically change the graph. But what I also have to do is dynamically change the behavior of these buttons. So this perform one way ANOVA has to change according to the modeling type. And also when we click, if I click this button, it's still going to give me a distribution of the original column, which was the sex column. And I don't want that. I want it to be showing me run pulse. So we're going to perform a modification that allows us to provide this list and to update these buttons. And let's make it totally flexible. Let's not hard code the Y variable. Let's allow the user to specify 
the y variable so we'll start that process in the next part of this video sequence hope you're finding this useful if so please give the video a like if you have questions as we're going through please put the questions in the comments and i'll get back to you uh, look forward to seeing you in the next video all the best bye for now